In today's video, we'll be looking at how to add shadows behind a subject in our photo composition in Affinity. So without any further ado, let's get started. So before starting a video, I would like to note that if you need the exercise files or the files that we will be using in this video, please check the link in the description for all the image assets. And if you haven't clicked the subscribe button to Affinity Till channel, then please press the subscribe button to get new tips and tricks related to Affinity in the future. Now without any further delay, let's get started. Now first of all, we have our background image right here. And on top of the background image, we need to add our subject image. So to place our subject image, all I will do is click on our finder window and I'll bring the subject inside of our document. So this is the subject and I'll simply click and drag it inside our backdrop or background layer. And now you can see that we have our subject placed nicely inside or on top of our background. Now let me go ahead and reposition our subject like so. And let me resize our subject a bit and make the subject a little bit smaller in size. Now the next step is to add shadows. First of all, let's add shadows behind our subject that will portray on top of the wall. So to add the shadows, by selecting our subject layer right here, I'll navigate below to our FX icon below the layers panel and click on it. And after I select our FX icon, you can see that we have a bunch of layer effects inside the layer effects box. Now, in Affinity, instead of drop shadow, we have something called outer shadow. So I'll activate the outer shadow by checking in this particular checkbox. And as soon as I check the outer shadow, now Affinity will apply a drop shadow or outer shadow behind our subject. So right now the outer shadow is not visible because we need to tweak some settings inside of our outer shadow settings right here on the right side. So there are different settings on the right side inside the layers effect for outer shadow. Right now our outer shadow type is set to pillow. But however, I want to change it to outer since we are creating an outer shadow. Next, I will invert our shadow. That is, you can see that on the left we have white and on the right we have black. So, I'll invert it because our light is coming from the right direction inside the composition. So, I'll click on invert or I'll click on this invert checkbox. And now you can see that our shadow is portraying on the left hand side. Next, I'll play with different other settings that are present in the outer shadow box. So for that, first of all, let me decrease our highlight color by clicking here and decreasing the opacity all the way to the left. And next, let us check the settings that are available in the shadows portion right here. And we want to set our blend mode to multiply because setting up the blend mode to multiply will get rid of all the white colors that are present in our shadows and only retain the black colors and that is what we want. So every settings on the shadow box is also okay. So I'll simply click out of the box to get rid of that box. Now let's play with other available settings. So we have other settings like radius. So if I increase the radius all the way to the right, you can see that our shadow is slowly expanding. And now let's adjust the direction or angle of our shadow by simply clicking and dragging it like so, as you can see here. So we can also adjust the value for the elevation right here. So if I simply adjust the value of elevation like so, it will shift our shadow as per the angle that we have set like this. And now let's make our shadows a bit softer by increasing the value in the soften property like so. So I'll keep it at somewhere around 16 for now. Now let's also play with the value of the azimuth property to make our shadows a bit more accentuated behind our subject. So I'll set it to minus 660 degrees for now. Now finally, let's adjust the opacity value of shadows right here in our shadows box and simply decrease it to a lesser value and I'll set it to be at 52 for now and then I'll get rid of that box by clicking out at our layers effect box. Now you can see that our shadows is looking much more natural behind our model or subject in our photo. 
Now let me go ahead and close our layer FX box by clicking on the close button. So if you look to the right of our subject, then you might notice that there are black artificial outlines that does not make the image shadow a bit natural. So what I will do is I'll duplicate our subject layer by holding down command and clicking on J. And after making a copy of our subject layer, I'll get rid of the effects that we have recently applied of the shadow on our duplicated layer. And now after getting rid of that shadow, what I will do is by selecting our previous subject layer, I'll add a layer mask right here. And by actively clicking on this layer mask or selecting the layer mask, now I'll select the brush tool and make sure that the foreground color is set to black. And if you have your brush type set to any other brush type, we can also change our brush by selecting the brush panel and selecting the type of brush to basic. And inside the basic brush type, let's select a brush type that is more softer. So I'll go for soft round brush that is available right here. And now I'll again go back to our layers panel and select the layer or the mask that we have recently applied to our subject layer. And now by selecting that particular mask, I'll simply go ahead to our image and then brush it at the outer part or the outer border of our image like so. So now you can see if we zoom in, we can you can see that the shadows on the right that are creating the border are simply disappearing. So I'll simply brush till this end. Now, if we zoom out, you can see that there are no more artificial black borders created by the shadow that we have just applied using our layer effects. So the next thing that we can also do to add a shadow is, let's create a new layer first by clicking on the pixel layer icon at the bottom of layers panel. And after a new pixel layer is created, simply select and drag that pixel layer below our subject layer like so. And now what we will do is we'll create a selection of our subject. After creating a new pixel layer, next we'll simply make the selection out of the existing subject layer that we have in the layers panel. So to do that, I'll simply hold down the command key. And if you're using Windows, hold down the control key and left click on your mouse by selecting or clicking on top of the thumbnail icon of your subject layer. And as soon as you do that, now we will get the selection out from the subject layer. Now by selecting the pixel layer, next what we will do is, first of all, let's set the color of the foreground color to something darker. So for that, first of all, make sure that your foreground color at the bottom of your toolbar is at the front and now we'll simply select a much grayish and dark color from our color panel right here. So I'm satisfied with this particular color. So the next step that we will be doing is apply or fill the selected portion with that color. So to do that, I simply hold down the command key and press the backspace key. And now you can see that in our pixel layer, the entire selection is filled with that particular gray color that we have recently selected in our foreground color at the bottom of our toolbar. And the next thing that we will do is change the blend mode of this pixel layer that is newly created to multiply by going at top of the layers panel and selecting multiply from this option so that our shadow will look much more natural. Now I'll get rid of the selection by holding down the command key and pressing the D key. And if you are using Windows, you can get rid of your selection by holding down the control key and pressing the D key. And now by selecting the move tool, we will adjust or transform our shadows that we have recently created in our new pixel layer. So to do that, let me first of all add a reference point inside our transform panel to the bottom right corner as a point of origin. And after setting a reference point at the bottom right corner as a point of origin, I'll play with the shear value inside the transform panel. So I'll click on the shear property and simply click and drag like so, as you can see here. So I'll keep the value of shear somewhere at 65 degrees. In addition to that, I'll also increase the value of width a bit like so. So let me increase it just a bit to somewhere around 332 pixels. 
Now after setting up the value of the width inside our transform panel, I'll add a layer mask to our pixel panel. By simply navigating below to our layers panel and clicking on mask layer icon right here. And as soon as we click on mask layer icon, you can see that a new mask layer has been added to our newly created pixel layer. And after doing this, what we will do next is we will mask out the area that are closer to the subject. So to do that, select your fill tool right here and make sure that your type is selected to linear gradient. And now by actively selecting your mask that you have recently created for the newly created pixel layer, simply click and drag inside your composition like so. And as you can see that nothing is happening right now. Be that's because we have to change the color of both of the endpoints and adjust its settings. So let us change the color. And to change the color, I'll go above our contextual toolbar and select this particular icon right here. And inside the contextual toolbar's gradient panel, let us set the endpoint of the right all the way to the black, like so. And now you can see that our shadow's top left corner has completely maxed out. Similarly, we'll adjust the colors for the left point as well by clicking on this point and then adjusting its opacity a bit like so, as you can see here. So we'll set it somewhere at around 32%. Now, we, next we can also adjust the midpoint as per we like by clicking and dragging from the slider that is present on our image composition itself, like so. And then we'll also add a new filter effect to this particular shadow by first of all selecting our newly created pixel shadow layer and then navigating below to the filter icon at our layers panel and clicking on Gaussian Blur. So let, let's add a bit of Gaussian Blur by clicking and dragging like so. As you can see, so I'll set the value to add 7.8 pixel for now and then I'll close the live Gaussian Blur box like so. Now next, let us duplicate the pixel shadow layer that we have just created by selecting it and holding down the shortcut key of command and J. And after duplicating it, let's get rid of both of the mask as well as the shadow effect that we have applied by selecting the mask and pressing on the trash can icon and as well as selecting the Gaussian blur filter and clicking on the trash bin icon. And now let us go back to our transform panel but before that you can see that all the properties right here are completely disabled so before that we should select our move tool and now you can see that our properties are enabled once again and let us adjust the value of the share tool to bring our transformation to its original point like so and next we'll also adjust the position of our y coordinate and bring the shadow a bit to the front like so and now let us add a Gaussian blur to this newly created pixel shadow and to do that let us navigate again below our layers panel and click on the filter icon and click on Gaussian blur now to select it and then adjust the radius to apply the Gaussian blur effect like so and after I'm satisfied with the Gaussian blur effect I'll simply close it down and then change the blend mode of this layer to multiply once again. And next, what we will do is we'll play around the value of opacity by decreasing the value of opacity all the way to, let's say, 11 for now. So right now you can see that the opacity is not being implemented. That's because we are selecting the filter layer inside the pixel shadow layer that we recently have created. So I'll undo it or just increase the value of opacity all the way to 100%. Now before... Now let's select the thumbnail of our pixel layer to select that particular layer and next I'll adjust the value of opacity to be it to somewhere around let's say 25% or let's say 22% for now. Now you can see that our image composition is looking very much natural and this is how you can easily add a shadow to your subject or behind your subject in your image composition using Affinity. So if you find this video helpful, please press the like button and to get more tips and tricks related to affinity, hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching this video and see you on the next video.